For the wonders of analog Hi8 video recording on the Sony Handycam, I am able to bring to you this piece of vintage mechanical wizardry known as a mechanical typewriter. It is an Olivetti Linea 98 fully mechanical typewriter from the mid to late 1970s that I just recently acquired. I got it out of the box it shipped in and much to my amazement it actually works. There was no damage done whatsoever in shipping. Of course it would probably help if I actually got this up onto a suitable workbench or even a table to take a look at it. I think that would be much better than using the floor. Recently I had a need to use a typewriter or perhaps even a desire to use a mechanical typewriter yet again. I previously used to own an electronic typewriter. It was a Sears, uh, actually a rebranded Smith Corona XL1000 electronic typewriter, which served me very well for the year and a half that I had it, but eventually its motor decided to cease functioning altogether in a plume of smoke. I went ahead and turned it on, went to go get some pieces of paper, and came back to, an, to a horrific electronic burning smell that was very very potent and needless to say it never worked since then and it was going to be more work and more money than it was honestly worth to repair it so that left me without a typewriter for the better part of half a year until I stumbled across this typewriter unfortunately in the vast majority of cases most mechanical typewriters you're going to come across in secondhand shops, thrift shops charity shops, any other kind of shop you can think of that sells used goods such as mechanical typewriters, you're most likely, more likely than not, going to find a mechanical typewriter that is in just totally sad, worn out, and quite frankly useless condition. Most, if not all, mechanical typewriters received a lot of heavy use in, its, in their former lives. They no longer work properly and need a lot of work, a lot of TLC to get them back up to fighting trim. But that was not the case, however, with this Olivetti typewriter. I was amazed when I stumbled upon this on eBay being sold for a bargain basement price with an even lower shipping price. I can't imagine this thing being anywhere close to the ballpark of $15 to ship all the way across the country. But that is all that I paid, so either the shipper severely miscalculated his shipping costs or he just gets a very steep discount. Whichever of the two happened to be the case, I, see, I think that I definitely lucked out on this typewriter. Contrary to what most people would believe, even though it, this indicates that this was used in a school type environment at one point in its life, it has none of the usual warning signs of a piece of equipment that was used in a school type setting. Usually things that are used in schools are just truly worn out, abused, broken, and uh, the life has just been beaten out of them. This has just your traditional QWERTY keyboard that we're all accustomed to using either on electronic typewriters or a regular computer keyboard. The only minor deviations being the addition of a cent sign on the sixth key, quarter, half, three quarter, and a degree symbol keys. And aside from that, it's essentially the very same keyboard that you use on your computer to type a regular Word document. You have your backspace key here, which you can see backspace is the carriage, which in turn allows you to backspace. You have your margin release button here, so if you go beyond the predetermined margins you originally set up with this typewriter, you'll be able to go beyond that. Of course, it probably won't look all too good. At least the final product won't look all too good because your margin will be nice and straight, and then you'll have one area where the text extends beyond that margin. Unlike a computer keyboard, this is not called the caps lock key, it's called the shift lock key, but it accomplishes the same thing. It simply locks the shift functionality and allows you to type in all capital letters. And to undo that, you don't press the shift lock key yet again like on a computer keyboard. You simply press either of the two regular shift keys. Now you have two different switches here that do different tasks. The first of which is this ribbon color selector. Judging from the limited information I was able to garner online, this can support a maximum of four different ribbon colors. So if you have one of those fancy ribbons 
that has the bottom portion of it being black and the top portion red or vice versa. You can alternate between the different colors. And if you notice now, if I switch this to red, take a look at how much higher the ribbon raises up compared to when I have this switched to black. You can see the ribbon raises up quite a bit less. The function of this switch over here was something of a mystery to me until I eventually came across a manual for a similar Olivetti Linea typewriter, the Olivetti Linea 198, which is significantly different from this typewriter, but there are quite a few similarities. One such similarity is this, what's called a touch regulator, and it allows you to regulate the striking force of the hammers of the actual typeface. So when you're typing on here, and perhaps you have a scenario where you need to have a bit a bit stronger striking force, particularly useful for using for when you're using carbon paper, you can simply set this from light medium all the way to firm settings and it's going to strike the page a fair bit harder than if you have it on the light setting and when i first received this typewriter i didn't have a clue what that switch actually did it was on the firm setting and so i just left it as is and i was beginning to wonder why everything i had typed was beginning to get punched through the paper it was because it was striking the paper with such force it was actually embossing the paper with the text. Now if you've noticed, on a computer keyboard there's usually a tab key right over here, useful for indenting a, a, a new power graph, but that is not the case with this typewriter. But it is located actually up here. You have a tab set, a tab clear, and a tabulator key, and you can program in mechanically of course, no electronics here or electronic memory, <coughs> you can control and program how much you want it to indent new paragraphs or even new lines or whenever you press this button. So to set it you simply, okay you don't want to do that and not go over your light, you simply create a new line and you simply press tab set after you've indented as many times as you want. So in my case, usually what people do is space in about six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They'd press tab set and then that's all you need to do. And now every time you create a new line or you need to indent, you need only press the tabulator key. The carriage automatically goes to that same position we pre-programmed and that's all that's necessary to indent. Have you yet to actually find a description of what the technical name for this kind of a key is, but I'm just going to use my layman's term way of describing it, and that is it's a rapid fire space key. If you need to space quickly and you don't need to keep, you don't want to keep tapping the space bar, you can simply put your finger on here and hold it, and the carriage will just continue to move until it reaches the end of your preset margins. You can actually see some information here from the original owners when it was used in whichever school it happened to reside in for the entirety of its life before it came into my possession. I guess that's B, room B115 and whichever number typewriter, I'm assuming they had quite a few of these mechanical typewriters. This is from the mid to late 1970s of course so it's it's been around for quite some time now and that's one of the reasons why I've decided to make this video seeing as how there are not any videos or overviews detailing this typewriter I figured now would be as good as time as any to, to do a sort of review slash overview on this typewriter removing this cast iron cover which actually weighs close to a pound that's how heavy it is reveals the inner workings of the mechanics of this typewriter you can see we have the various hammers for the different characters and letters all of which are in excellent condition thankfully are not bent or jammed. I see too many, I've seen way too many typewriters used where these hammers have all gotten out of whack and gotten out of alignment through years of heavy use and abuse. And so every time you go to type a particular letter, it'll bring up two letters at once and jam. And the only solution to that is to have to pull them manually down. And every time you try to type that same letter, the same exact thing will happen. But thankfully that's not the case with this typewriter all of its hammers, at least I believe that's what it's properly called. Again, I don't profess to be any kind of a typewriter expert, merely just exploring this typewriter's potential and usability. This is actually using the original typewriter ribbon from the original owner, 
and as such if you look closely you can actually see the indentations of previously typed material and if I were so inclined and so dedicated I could probably go ahead and piece together what the previous owners were typing on this thing but you, I actually ended up flipping this typewriter ribbon around so that I could reuse it and it's very simple to because since they only typed on the topmost portion of the ribbon I can actually switch the colors around and instead type on the portion of the ribbon that was unused. So very simple to do. And of course I just gave myself a minor scare before I was attempting to type but I noticed that it wasn't, it wasn't allowing the hammer to strike the page and then I realized it had reached the end of the margin. And speaking of which, how you'd go about setting up your left and right margins are very simple. There are two levers on both sides of the carriage and the way in which you are to go about setting the margins is to simply pull this lever toward you the carriage will release and then you simply move it to the position at which you want the margin to reside and in this case I have everything set up the way I like it so I'm not going to play with it but it's a very simple matter as soon as you pull this toward you the carriage will release just like this you'll be able to move it wherever you want and then once you're finished setting up the margin wherever you like and lining it up you would simply let go, this lever would return to this position, and then your margin would be set up like that. And yes, this typewriter does support single, double, and triple line spacing. Quite nice, especially if you don't want to have to keep printing a new line manually, and you want it to double or triple space automatically. It's a very simple way to do so. This lever over here actuates the platen release, which allows you to strain out your paper. And the only feature I have yet to actually figure out, and whose function is still a mystery to me, is this one right here. It simply locks into either of these two positions. I've yet to actually figure out what it does. The only version of the manual that I was able to discover and find online through quite a bit of searching was a manual in Italian. And I actually have this typewriter sitting atop these foam pads in a futile effort to mitigate and minimize the amount of typing noise and clunking that makes its way through the floor into the ceiling below. It's amazing how noisy it can actually get when you really start getting into typing on this typewriter rather fast. So the foam does help reduce the amount of clunking noise that gets transmitted into the ceiling below, but it's still pretty noticeable. I'd hate to see what would happen if you're typing directly on the floor with this thing. Back here on the typewriter is what I'd presume to be the remnants of the data plate, which would have an accompanying serial number for this typewriter. But that has since worn off and there's no remnants whatsoever on there. And it's through this sticker that we discovered this typewriter was made in Brazil. Even though it's an Italian typewriter company, this was made in Brazil. The platen is plenty healthy. It's not dried out, dry rotting, cracking, or overall very smooth, which makes it very difficult to advance paper. I'm going to try to lift this thing up. That is a heavy typewriter. Now I'm not any kind of an expert typist on mechanical typewriters, nor do I profess to be one, but I'm going to try my best to type as fast as I possibly can on this typewriter without making any significant spelling or even grammatical error. So we'll see how well this actually goes. And of course we need to load this up, with that up over there, I believe that's straight enough. Create a new line, and I believe it is well and truly time now for me to begin typing on this mechanical typewriter. And you can see it's doing it yet again. It doesn't want to sound the bell for whatever reason. Not all too sure what that's all about, so we'll go ahead and try that yet again. Yep, it doesn't want to sound the bell now. And it's as simple as that to be able to type up a simple text document using this Olivetti 
Linea 98 typewriter. Of course, some people have complained about the typeface being a bit too large and bold for their liking, but I actually favor it. It actually does a very decent job for its age. 